from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering IBM Think 2018. Brought to you by IBM. We're back at IBM Think 2018. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante, and this is day two of our wall-to-wall -wall coverage of IBM Think. We've been doing IBM shows for years. Uh, this is the big consolidated show, 30 to 40,000 people. Too many people to count. Cameron Clayton is here, he's a GM of Watson Content and IoT platform at IBM. Thanks for coming on. Thank you very much for having me. So quite a show, right? <laughs> a large, Standing room only. show. <laughs> Standing room only and uh, lots of great announcements. So tell us about your announcements. Yeah, so we got a couple of things we're really, really excited about. The team's been working really hard on uh, for the last uh, few months. Uh, one is a way to train Watson to make Watson even smarter than it already is uh, out of the box. And so we've been building uh, data kits by vertical industry. So for financial services, for travel and transportation, uh, for the hospitality industry, uh, for healthcare, uh, and for government on you know, how, do you, how do you give Watson a high machine IQ right out of the gate as opposed to having to train it in your area of industry. Uh, and so once again, we're, we're really focused on making Watson the AI system for enterprise. And this is another step on that journey uh, to make Watson really, really smart. So really productizing it in a way that's you know, much easier to consume. Much easier to consume. And you know, if you think about it, uh, there's a lot of jargon in each industry, right? To be an expert in an industry, you got to know a lot of jargon, understand the context of that. Uh, an AI system doesn't know that unless it's taught that. And so we're teaching uh, Watson uh, that and then how to apply it uh, successfully in each of those industries. So it's a pretty material leap forward uh, in how we're training Watson. So hence the content component. Of hence the what content. And, and in what industries you're knocking down, where are you starting? Yeah, so we're starting uh, with financial services, uh, we're launching uh, in travel and transportation, and in hospitality. So we're basically, you know, uh, this is a pretty fun one, I love food, uh, but basically Watson went out and scanned uh, the entire internet and collected all the recipes that it could find on the internet and trained itself on food. Uh, and so you can ask it now questions about food, what restaurants, but you know, really specific things. If you're a vegan, you can you know, find out what, what's available near you. Uh, if you're gluten, gluten intolerant, you can find out you know, things on the menu like that. Uh, but then there's other things, you know, like in the travel and transportation industry, uh, for virtual agents, for uh, travel agents, they can ask questions of Watson, and it can ask very specific, very deep things, very much like a human would. Uh, and so you can say, you know, a simple thing like, you know, where should I stay in New York? And a human would respond, well, are you a member of any hotel rewards program? Normal AI chatbot wouldn't. It would just say, these are the list of the 4,000 hotels in New York. Uh, Watson will actually ask human-like questions to give you the best answer uh, possible. But all that requires training, and that's what we've built in uh, with these Watson content uh, data kits, uh, and we're really excited about them. So I'll come back to that, but so if I take that example of you know, Watson Chef, mm -hmm. um, there's this discussion on AI for the enterprise versus AI for consumers. Right. Are you crossing over? I mean, it sounds that like that was kind of a consumer -y application, but yeah. is that just an example? It's just an example. No, it was, it's very much about uh, AI for the enterprise, right? And so the, the four priority industries that we're focused on, first is financial services, the, sort of the sweet spot for IBM. The second is supporting uh, our government clients to make sure that Watson is trained in the language and the nuances uh, of government. The third is Watson Health, so the healthcare industry, both the regulation uh, and the language uh, itself, so everything from pharmacology, uh, et cetera. And then the fourth is uh, travel and transportation. So it's, it's very much about making Watson the smartest AI system for enterprise. That's absolutely its focus. What's the IoT angle um, in your title? Yeah, What's going so on there? I run the IoT platform uh, for IBM, and so the weather company, which is how yeah. I joined IBM, uh, which I also run, uh, really is one of the largest IoT platforms in the world, which was actually a big part of, of the, the 
acquisition case for acquiring the weather company. We're now bringing the ability to ingest you know, 35 to 40 billion data requests every day uh, with the weather company platform to the IoT platform. We've combined those things together so we can ingest data and content at a scale unlike pretty much anyone else in the world. Sort of second only to Google in terms of the scale of uh, data and content we can ingest. And we use that data to help train Watson on one hand, and on the other hand to support our clients in multiple uh, industries around the world. Yeah, I remember when, you, when IBM did that acquisition, uh, Bob Picciano told me, well, you got to understand this is an IoT play as much That's as right. it is a data science play. That's so how point. has that evolved and come together with IBM's you know, core? Yeah, so I think in a, in a couple of ways. One is it's taken, the weather company was mostly a domestic you know, US business. IBM in the last couple of years has globalized that uh, business in a very material way. So uh, a great example is in aviation, where you know we have the top 30 U.S. Uh, you know operators. Uh, now we have hundreds of operators all around the world uh, helping them make decisions every day. At, at its core, this IoT platform that started with with the weather company is now much larger than that has grown into a decision platform, right? We make recommendations for people to make decisions. Mostly that's with Watson and AI, but sometimes it's just with you know, uh, machine learning and, and more traditional methods. So you got some other stuff going on. Uh, we were we talking off camera about this real-time closed captioning. I was showing you our video clipper tool. You said, hey, yeah. we have something very similar. We're going to maybe talk and see if we can yeah, you know, collaborate. I can't wait to, to, to try that out. So, Talk more about what you're doing with real-time closed captioning. It's a mandate you know, right. for broadcasters and other folks like YouTube. You know, right. How are you helping them? Yeah, so you know, as you mentioned, you know, closed captioning is, is a regulated space for broadcasters, uh, uh, both local and, and national. Uh, it's a cost center for them, right? They have to do it, uh, and it takes time, people, effort, and energy. Uh, we're automating that and we're doing it in a real-time way. So in true real-time. So as we're speaking, uh, Watson is listening, it's recording, and it's annotating everything that goes on in the video clip. Uh, it then is also breaking it up into uh, so essentially a highlight reel, right? Uh, and so you can ask questions, hey, show me the highlights of you know, the US Open or the Masters Golf Tournament and it'll automatically select the very best uh, clips that came from that tournament based on sentiment analysis, uh, tone of voice, trending keywords uh, that we're showing in social media and surface uh, those clips up, uh, typically to a human editor who will then uh, process them. Uh, but it, it, it basically automates a system uh, that today requires human intervention to deliver and, and makes it completely seamless by being real time. So Watson will analyze social data, Twitter data, look at the, take the fire hose and say, okay, based on the Olympics or whatever it was, this is what was hot. That's right. <laughs> curling was off the charts hot. <laughs> curling so was always gonna, curling was always hot. At hashtag Olympics. curling. Right. Okay. Cool. That's right. And this is a product that's out in the market today, or it's it's a product that's launching uh, here at Think and is uh, being tested by multiple clients uh, right now, and is you know a really great uh, accuracy quality scores, ninety five percent plus accuracy. Uh, but most importantly, it's no human intervention, so no person has to do anything, uh, and it meets all of the regulatory requirements uh, for digital content creators, which is sort of the fastest growing part of the, the yeah. video ecosystem, people like yourself uh, and others, uh, we're also using it to automatically meta tag all their clips. Right? So not only does it do sentiment analysis of the clips and the content itself using the closed captioning, but it's also going out and measuring social media keywords and hashtags that are trending and, and looking for those keywords in the uh, closed captioning and clipping that out and surfacing it uh, to make it easier. And I consume that as a monthly service kind of thing? Exactly, exactly. Uh, yeah. How about GDPR? That's a hot topic these days. Can you help me with my GDPR problem? Because my, the clock's ticking on my Clock's clock ticking on GDPR. If you haven't in. started on GDPR yeah, yet, yeah, you're yeah. in some you're, trouble. You're way late. Uh, you're way late, but you, you better call IBM pretty quickly and, and we'll parachute in and, and try and help. How can you help? So I think we can help uh, in, in multiple ways. So uh, one is obviously our services 
group with GBS, uh, we're doing you know, thousands of uh, uh, engagements trying to help people with GDPR. I think secondly is we've got a big effort with our consumer, with a business to be ready for GDPR. Uh, we have 250 million users uh, of our weather app around the world and they all have to be compliant uh, uh, here pretty quickly. Uh, and so we've got that all set up, ready to go. Uh, and then, you know, what these data kits also learn the regulations, right? So you can ask questions of Watson about GDPR uh, and your specific use cases as a customer, and it will show you how to apply uh, the regulations of GDPR to your business. So uh, early on you talked about these data kits. I mean, I, in my head I was thinking SDK. Um, right. So how does that all work? Yeah, so you, you can, you basically, on a, on a SaaS basis, you, you essentially rent these data kits, um, everything from like a general knowledge kit mm -hmm. to an industry specific kit for financial services to a sub-industry like wealth management within financial services. Uh, uh, and you basically can rent each each of those pieces. Uh, within the government category, we have a GDPR capability along with other regulatory uh, capabilities uh, within the data kits. Okay, so how does that work? I, 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 I sort of train my my in, in so internal it's, systems? It's super uh, easy. You basically you know, go to Bluemix and you can just you know, use it as a subscription out of Bluemix is the fastest, easiest way to do it. Uh, secondly, you can talk to any of your you know, IBM associates and uh, about how to use uh, data kits with Watson. Uh, it's always used in conjunction with Watson services themselves uh, is how you basically deploy it in practice. So I've got, let's say I've got data all over the place in my organization, it's yep. siloed out and I'm freaking out because I, 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 you know, I got the data, personal data on an individual here and then one over here and one over here. What do I do? I point my corpus of data at, at Watson and it helps me to extract from entities, dedupe, yeah, surface. So I think we, the first step in all of our engagements is to listen and understand exactly you know, where all the data is yeah. and everyone's on a journey, right? Uh, <laughs> from on-prem to hybrid to some public cloud and everything in between. Yeah, they don't know where all And they don't know is, where yeah. it all is. And so you know, step one is for us to go in and listen. Uh, uh, we try to, we have a rule in our group, like two ears and one mouth, use them proportionally. Uh, and so we go in and we try to listen, find out, map out uh, sort of a, a architecture of where our, our client's data is, and then understand what problem they're really trying to solve. Because oftentimes uh, the, there's lots of good ideas, but there's only a couple of problems that really matter uh, to that client to solve. Right now, GDPR is certainly one of those problems. Uh, but you know, it, whether it's revenue or efficiency, uh, we can help, uh, but we really need to understand what the problem set is first. And so we have a, uh, a engineering team that goes in and does sort of architectural work and listens up front. Uh, and then we go into a sort of solutioning mode to solve problems. One of the questions we often ask on theCUBE is, you know, how far can we take machine intelligence? How far should we take machine intelligence? Yep. What are the things that machines can do that humans can't? How is that changing? How will they complement each other? How will they compete? You must think about that a lot in, in your role. Um, mm -hmm. You're augmenting, sometimes replacing a lot of, of, of human tasks. But what are your thoughts on those big picture questions? Yes, I think we've, as a, as a, as a company, we really, really hard to make sure that we are always augmenting people wherever possible, right? We fundamentally believe uh, that every job is going to be changed by AI, uh, but we believe that uh, humans are really good at creativity, at curiosity, uh, and at risk management. We don't really think about us being good at risk management, but from when we're born, just learning to walk is a risk <laughs> management exercise, right? Uh, look at any toddler wobbling learning to walk, you sort of realize it's a risk management exercise. Uh, AI systems have to learn all these things. Um, and so surfacing and recommending decisions is what we believe uh, Watson and AI is best equipped to do, and then have a, have a person actually make the, the final call. Great. All right, Cameron, hey, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE. It's really a pleasure meeting you. Absolutely. And, uh, look forward Likewise. to the follow up. Absolutely. Excited to we'll see follow that. Up. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. Right after this short break, you're watching theCUBE live from IBM Think 2018. We'll be right back. <laughs>